series on understanding investment risk and would like to uh, start things with what uh, is the CAGR. The CAGR is known as the compounded annualized growth rate. It is also known as uh, annualized return. There are two types of annualized returns. One is the CAGR, uh, the other is the XIRR. SEBI has mandated that uh, returns uh, uh, listed above one year duration has to be an annualized return. So uh, what is the CAGR? Now, let's study the journey of rupees 10,000 that was invested on 1st January 2003 uh, in ICICI Top 100. This is a large cap equity fund. Not many people uh, talk about this, but it is a very good mutual fund. Now, this uh, investment on 1st January 2003 would have grown to about 1.19 lakhs on December 31st, 2014. Uh, and... Uh, this would be reported as offering uh, as having offered a return of 22.9%, which is quite spectacular. Uh, but uh, not many people understand the kind of um, ups and downs that this investment would have undergone. And uh, this 22.9% is not the return that the fund has got every year. This is some kind of an averaged return. Let's understand what that is. Now, typically, this 22.91% is calculated in the following way. 10,000 into 1 plus return to the power 12. That gives you 1.18 lakhs. So, to the power 12 means that 1 plus return is multiplied 12 times. And 12 here represents the number of years elapsed from 1st January 2003 to 2014, uh, end of 2014. That's 12 years. So you have to multiply it by the number of years. So it's to the power 12. Now, if you look at the annual returns of ICICI top 100, um, the returns have fluctuated quite a lot, obviously because it's an equity investment. After one year, the, um, the return would have been a spectacular, extraordinary 94.97%. I, I mean, you don't get that every year. The next year is 13.4, then it's 49, pretty good, 42, 44, and then a minus 47, then 74, 17, minus 20 again, 32, 11.4, and 38.3%. These are the annual returns. Well, annual returns in equity means that it is the percentage change. That is 10,000 rupees invested on 1st January 2003 would have increased by 94%. Uh, at the end of 2003 and it would have fallen down by 13% at the end of 2004 and so on. That's what annual returns means. Now, there's a way in which you can put them all together. So, uh, 10,000 at the end of one year would have increased by 94.7%. That's what that equation represents. I hope uh, that's clear enough. Now, after a couple of years, you can see that the investment would have uh, changed by that much 94.1 plus 94.7% into 1 plus 13.4 percent and 1 plus 49.5 percent those are the annual returns in the second and third years so now we continue doing that for the next um, uh, nine years to get the complete uh, journey so that's all the 12 year returns listed there and if you multiply all of them in that fashion you will get that 1.18 uh, lakhs so that's that's the journey that 10,000 has uh, gone. It's a uh, tumultuous journey, ups and downs. Now, you don't want this. People do not report this because it's messy to calculate uh, annual returns and then uh, write it down in this fashion. It's messy to do that. So what they do is to sweep all this return information under the carpet and focus only on the amount invested, which is 10,000, and the value got, which is 1.18 lakhs. And they use both of them and put them in an equation like this. So all these returns are bundled into 1 plus return to the power 12. And that is called the compounded annualized growth rate. And that is 22.9%. This is not the ret uh, return that the fund has got every year. It is a representation of all those returns. It is... Um, what technically known as a geometric average, a form of the geometric average, technically speaking. Uh, so it's, it's some kind of average. It's not exactly the arithmetic average, but it is an average that 
I mean, uh, that is used to uh, take into account. Uh, it's a multiplicative average, as it's known as. And well, you can say that had you invested ten thousand rupees in some instrument which which, which gives you twenty two percent return every year, let's say some extraordinary uh, special kind of fixed deposit, then that fixed deposit would have gone would have grown to one point one eight lakhs. But um, that's the notion behind CAGR, but it should not be uh, uh, used to assume that that's the kind of return that the uh, the investor would have got every year. Well, that's the return the investor has got at the end of the investment period, not during the investment period. And that's the key uh, difference between the CAGR, which is used in a fixed deposit, which is actually known before the investment and CAGR that is used to represent um, equity returns. Catch you again in another video. Bye-bye.